All right, real quick, I'm going to show you what I'm doing here this morning. I'm making, uh, I'm splitting the viburnum down into strips that I can use to tie up the bundles. Okay, so some of the viburnum that I gathered was not straight enough for arrows, but I can use it for tying up the bundles. All right, so it's pretty similar to what I've seen basket makers do with hazel and stuff hazel and willow and that kind of thing but anyway you started off this is already a split in half from a long uh, skinny shoot that was too skinny for an arrow okay so I don't like harvesting these or cutting these because they're good next year or the year after but if I want to make some some stuff like this I'll get a few and I'll show you, uh, there's an advantage to the tapered shafts when you're bundling. Um, if you've got parallel shafts, like if you carve them down before you bundle them, uh, parallel, uh, it doesn't have the same effect as what I'm going to show you. Anyway, natural shoots have a natural taper, right? And you can use that to your advantage when bundling them. Uh, because if you like I'll show you real quick here it's uh, one end is skinnier right one end is fat so you you start to wrap up here well probably in the middle right at first you start a wrap here and then you ram this wrapping down toward the fatter part and it tightens up okay and same with the next one you start up here with the wrap with one of these wraps <clears throat> And make sure it's nice and tight and then you ram it down further and then you continue the taper as it gets fatter increases the tightness and also as it's drying uh, you just ram these these bands of wood down further and the only thing the only time you'll need to add a wrap is up here near the top okay because all the other ones are sliding down slightly you might need to add another one up here on top okay they don't slide very far i'll show you as it goes right that's the advantage of using these uh, or starting this process this year with the green so i can show you all these things to do with the uh, with the shoots now this doesn't split perfectly evenly if you tilt the knife this way, if you tilt the knife that way and pry it up like this, this split goes that way. You know, if you pry it this way, the split goes that way. If you pry it the other way, it goes down that way. So you 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 apply forward pressure and as it's splitting, you can see if it's going if it's following the center or not. And what, if it's starting to go off center, you know, you just apply pressure or twist it. I shouldn't say apply pressure. I should twist it where it needs to be twisted so it'll stay straight. So the split will stay straight. I'm applying slight pressure forward, slight pressure forward. And then as a, I'm eyeballing it, I keep it centered. Now this... The viburnum is pretty good about not twisting out of alignment. There you go. Let me, let me do this through the viewfinder. It's hard to do this through the viewfinder, but it looks like I'm going to have to in order to show you guys what I'm doing exactly. It takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm going to split this one all the way down. And you, you know you you can rock it back and forth like this once you get good at it it's just become second nature there's very slight forward pressure most of the splitting comes from the twisting but you need some forward pressure just to give you an idea where it's going But not too much forward pressure because you can cut yourself. 
you know you don't want to cut towards yourself that's the rule but we're going to break the rule here because it's not much pressure and these nuts yeah, a little bit irregular okay all right so once i get that there's pith in here right so you gotta scrape that out but this is what i do as i'm scraping like up here i start and see how bendy is that it's, it's pretty bendy how about that yeah it's good so as i'm going down i feel see if it's still bendy and uh, shave it down to the same width as I'm going along. All right? Just feel how it bends and just do this all the way down. Try to keep, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a tie. It's just for tying these bundles. I'm going to see how it works. It was a fat spot right there. And yeah, you can do this with a, a stone flake as well. Don't worry, I'll do a lot of stone stone tool woodworking coming up probably this summer. And I'm trying to do this in a hurry. It takes longer with stone, yes. Because the stone gets dull very fast, and you got to get another flake or to switch the position on the stone to get that sweet spot so you can continue shaving. The steel has the advantage of not wearing down fast, stone does not have that advantage. Can you see? Now, you might say, well, just get some spruce root. Yeah, yeah, I know. Spruce root works better than this. Oh, yes. But since I have a lot of viburnum available right now, and I was going to throw this away because it's too skinny, I just make this stuff out of it. And you guys are into basket weaving and stuff, you know what I'm doing here. This is very familiar. But those of you who don't know, but are curious, now you know. You can use the viburnum. Now, I have not done this with buckthorn because the other name for buckthorn is the breaking buckthorn. You know, alder buckthorn is also called breaking buckthorn. And I know why, because it breaks easy. You might not be able to get this type of flexibility from the breaking buckthorn. Or from the alder buckthorn same thing so i haven't tried that yet but i might try that and there's probably other plants that are better than this you can use vines or whatever but the thing is with wood i'm pretty sure the wrapping can remain really tight because it doesn't pull it's not stretchy in this direction whereas a vine or some other material like some of that twine there it is kind of stretchy in that direction but this is not so you, you can uh, you can take advantage of the taper of the shafts to move the wrapping down to make it tighter now you can do the same thing by moving the string if you wrap it with string you can move the string down but I've noticed with string that it loosens up under tension just because of the nature of the fibers of the string they all stretch so but I've noticed that wood does not do that. The wrapping, if you do it made of wood or uh, spruce root, it doesn't get loose like the string does. Yeah. Now, sisal twine, that was, that's jute, right? This, this thing over here I'm pointing at, this is jute. Uh, it does kind of stretch a little bit or under tension it won't stay the same length it'll start to stretch out 
But uh, I think Sissel Twine is a little bit better at resisting the stretching. I think, from what I remember. So Sissel Twine works pretty good. <laughs> but this is kind of kind of cool. Once you get good at it, it doesn't take too long. Especially when it's green, you can shave it really fast and shape it. So here I'm whittling it because it's it gets thick down near the fat end. You can't whittle it with stone. That's another disadvantage. It won't whittle like this with a piece of stone. You got to keep scraping, which takes a little bit longer. That's all. Yeah, it's still really thick. And like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. And I store these in water to keep them from drying out and then cracking when I start to bend them. Because it's a pretty tight radius on these bundles. So I might have to take down the thickness a little bit more. Anyways. Almost done. Now how long is this? I don't know. It's at least three feet. Spruce roots, yeah, you can get them. Like uh, last time I gathered some spruce root, I got pieces that were six feet, seven feet. I mean, they're pretty good. Not all the spruce root is going to be that long, but you can get long, long lengths of spruce root. I'm pretty sure if I looked hard enough and got good at it, I could get longer pieces. What's the advantage of longer pieces? Well, when you're doing some other stuff, like basketry or whatever, it's so nice to be able to just weave or use long pieces without having to splice them together. Or overlap them or whatever it's just nice to have long pieces for your projects yeah okay so that's that's bendy Okay, bendy enough. All right, so I just do this. It's not perfect. It'll have little kinks in it or whatever. And hopefully now that I stick in my water, they'll be good. And I'll be able to show you some wrapping when I wrap these. All right, I got to make a couple more. Yeah. Anyway, let me... I'll put this in some I'll put this in the shade. I gotta go inside. Alright, that's it for now. Alright. Now uh this is a continuation, second part of this uh experimenting with viburnum for wrapping the viburnum. Yep. So I cheated and wrapped this yesterday and left it to dry overnight just to see how it would work. Okay. Uh, these are what they call Turk's head knots, right? Or um, woggles. If you just if you take this out, you look at it. It's a it's called a woggle, all right. Anyway, I'm experimenting with these uh, 
instead of using rubber bands because I'm going to be doing a lot of natural tool and completely primitive woodworking and stuff like that. So I'll be using all natural materials and not this uh, synthetic rubber stuff for future videos. Right? Right. It's, I'm itchy today. I did some yard work. Okay, so as you can see, one of these woggles or one of these Turks head knots is loose okay the rest of them seem to be pretty tight uh i'm gonna do one on video let's see if i can remember i've slept since then so i might not do very well in tying this knot today um anyway these this this has been soaking in water since the last video so that's been like a couple days i can already tell this is too fat too wide let me take it down a little bit well in the interest of saving time this should be pliable enough when it's too wide it's a little bit difficult to work with I found out mm. let's see the Sun is gonna ruin my video but I'll just I'll just wing it and go with it yeah see the sun's already starting to show and i don't want to close the door all the way because it gets way too hot in here yeah it's it's like 78 degrees in the shed and it's only like 60 outside yeah it gets way too hot in here too fast if i if i close the door now the temperature is slowly going down because I have the door open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, doing those knots, the Turks head knots. I noticed that if it's not completely smooth down here, when I'm whittling, it'll sp it'll split, and it, it's a uh, it won't be as easy to do the knot. It's got to be very pliable, but not it not so much that the grain will split and it'll start to lift splinters. So if it's if it's smooth, you know, all the way down with no chatter, it'll work. But as soon as there's chatter or any uneven whittling, uh, some of these fibers will lift up while you're trying to tie the knot. Yeah. So I'm going to make this easier for me to tie the knot because I don't want to have any problems at all. I'm going to have a hard enough time remembering how I tied it. Yeah, like I said, I've already slipped since then. It's been at least a day. Forget how to tie the knot. I don't do it very often. Yeah, it makes it much easier when this is more narrow and not as wide. For this particular type of knot. Now for basket weaving, you want to have it wide so you don't have to use so much of it. And yes, I am going to do some basket weaving. Oh yes, because around here they use a lot of basketry for everything from quivers to, uh, you know, backpacks. I don't know what you would call them if it's a basket pack. Basket packs? Or backpacks made of woven material? I don't know, but I'm going to do a lot of weaving, hopefully, if I don't get distracted doing other things. And make some uh, basket quivers and some basket pouches. and Maybe even a basket hat. Who knows? I go crazy with basketry. Yeah. They've, they've even got basket weaving classes out here. Yes, they do. And I'm sounding like an old guy. But this is, believe it or not, the basket weaving classes are for young people. I didn't see any old people in the picture. Nope. It's a cultural thing. Both in terms of Native American stuff and European stuff. 
All right. Here we go. Almost there. Okay. This is more fuzzy than it was yesterday or the day before. Yeah, it's been soaking overnight. That's probably why it's so fuzzy. Anyway, here we go. Let's see. This one is loose. It loosened up. Uh, believe it or not, when wood shrink, when wood dries, it doesn't always shrink. Sometimes it expands. Or depending on what kind of knot you have, it'll expand. All right, so it goes this way, and then this way, and then like this. And then what I got to do is, I think... Let me see. I think I go under right here. Let me, let me. Yeah, I think so. You gotta be where, be, uh, bear with me if I don't remember this whole process. Okay, and then turn it over like this. Now, this is the tricky part. This one on top has to go under the other one. Yeah, like this. Can you see? No, can't see what I'm doing. I had to do that. Okay. And I, I loosen it by this loose end is the one that goes under. So if you loosen it, you can get it under there. Now, Take this and go under here like this. Being careful not to break your material. All right, and then up. And then I think this goes under like this. Got to make sure it stays flat in the proper direction. And then, you, you know, you end up parallel to the first one. Yeah, like this. And again, I got to make sure it's flat in the correct direction. Yeah, so like that. But it's too loose right now, right? So I got to tighten the whole thing up. So this is the tricky part. Gonna tighten the whole thing up. Let me see. Now it tightens up when you do multiple passes, but I want to get it tighter to begin with. So I'm just gonna pull on it. I'll do one more pass through the whole thing. Okay. So you just pass the material one more time through in the same direction, in the same places as before. And this is what I mean about lifting up splinters right there. If you don't, if you're not careful in how you prepare this stuff, it'll split on you and crack and do all kinds of stupid stuff. I'm gonna make sure it's flat in the correct direction. See, like that. And just follow the other one. Now, what's helpful is if you have a little poker stick so you can get in here and, and spread these out. So you can follow along where it's supposed to go. Now, normally when you do this knot, these strands are side by side, but I'm just going to overlap them over the top because I'm, I'm trying to get it tighter. It's not for aesthetics, it's for utility. So I just want to try to get this wrap tighter. And you notice I'm starting up at the skinny end because it's going to get fatter down here. You'll see I'm going to push it down and it should tighten up if everything if I did everything right. You'll see. 
this in the correct direction? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. So just gonna follow, keep following the other previous strand. See, this helps to prepare the, the way through. When you use the awl. Okay. Now, see, I didn't do this perfectly, so I'm starting to get little kinks. But with the viburnum, since it's so strong, it works well. Where is, Where's the end of it? Uh, it broke by mistake, but I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. All right. That should be tight enough. It broke by mistake, but this sh is it? Is it tighter? Yeah, it's tighter. Okay. All right. So now, as you move it down, it gets tighter. There it is. See? It worked. So it's nice and tight. Yeah. So there you go, that's how I do it. Well, that's, that's how I'm gonna be doing it a lot more from now on, okay? So uh, one thing I did notice though is the bark is pretty thick on this and it's not drying perfectly flat. So uh, it does well when you, you, when you uh, tighten it, when you push it down to tighten, the thickness of the bark makes it tight here but I'm seeing that it's it's uh, going like this see how the wood is going like this and the wood is not straight it's best to have these areas down here straight because they're th the thickest so what I'm thinking on the next batch this one here this is the next batch I'm thinking of taking all of the bark off that way it's straighter because they're all going like this a little bit up like this because the thickness of the bark it's tight here the thickness of the bark makes it go up slightly and I don't want any slightlies see this one is a little bit more pronounced I don't want any of those curves to stay in there so I mean I could take them out with heat but it just adds another layer of problems all right since this one is loose there's a couple things I could do I could try to compress it to try to retie it. I can stick a wedge in there to make it tight. Or I can just take it off entirely and make another one. Yeah. But the easiest is just to wedge it with something. Just stick a stick in there. And as the stick gets thick, it'll tighten it up. See, is you know the natural shoots have a taper. So let's see if that works. Well, I know it's going to work. I'm just going to see if this particular piece works. I was using this earlier to mix some paint. Luckily, I had it available within five seconds. Yeah. I think this is lilac. Yeah, it's a piece of lilac, which is another wood I'm going to be experimenting with to make arrows from. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do this so it tightens up. So you stick the skinny end first in, and then you push it through. Uh, well, it didn't work that well, but we're going to double it up. Where is the... Watch, I'll show you. That got it slightly tighter, right? But we're going to do it again. We're going to wedge it again. And go all the way around and see if it'll get tighter. Yeah, I can feel it getting tighter already. All right, so as I push and as the, the stick gets thicker, it gets tighter. And I can wedge these little ones tighter in there as well. All right, all right. Yes, yes, is it working? Let's see. I think it is because it's already becoming a pain in the butt. Yeah. All right, so that's tighter. One more. Why not? Just wedge it in there. We want it nice and tight. Yeah. Okay. 
you don't want a bunch of stuff hanging out because you stack these together we want them compact all right so that's in there that's wedged nice and tight and it's probably now that i think about it a good idea to get everything wedged in all these other ones too well as it's drying out we'll see yeah as it's drying out i can do that okay so there we go this is the new one it looks pretty good there's no damage so i don't think it'll break these are the old ones that have been drying up for a day and they seem pretty tight still this one might be a little bit looser i think what happens is it does get a little bit loose when it dries which is ironic right it should shrink but it doesn't okay and i'll just get more twigs stick them in there to wedge it and end up like this all right but the next batch i'm going to do is going to have all the bark removed and i'm going to use some kind of natural waterproofing see this is a doesn't work that great the paint uh see how you can see the little checks cracks uh, the wood glue works best now i'm trying to think of a good natural waterproofing agent uh, the first one that comes to mind is to use duck fat because you can buy that at the store and it's you know very natural i've tried using beef tallow and deer tallow deer tallow works pretty good right but it's it's messy it, it, you know you get it on your fingers and it doesn't uh, it doesn't rub off easy the tallow it gets everywhere and it's it's just it makes everything greasy that you're working with and that's not a good thing the duck fat however absorbs into the wood absorbs into your hands it's it's not as greasy in feeling so i'm going to get some duck fat all right and i'm going to use duck fat on the shafts as well the the, the, the reason why i don't like to use oils is because they don't dry uh, however uh, it's not as natural as the others but if you use like what is it soybean oil the soybean oil does dry over time and i think it, it can offer some protection from splitting but soybean oil is a manufactured oil it's not as far as i know it's not easy to get in nature it's not like olive oil where you can just press the olives and that kind of thing have i tried olive oil on this no because olive oil is not a drying oil i want to use drying oils you know the other drying oils are walnut oil linseed oil the linseed oil is a big one uh, and there's a couple more that are drying oils i might have to use those or i might have to start breaking out more of the uh, pitch pine pitch and stuff see what i can use as a natural coating on the ends to keep them from cracking and to keep these little knots from cracking okay so i'm going to join this video up with the first part so uh the first part in doing these wrappings yeah that 14 minutes of the first part okay so i'll upload this hopefully it'll upload tonight all right that's it